Oh.
me through, us through, what he's done for us. And, you know, I wouldn't trade a burden. I wouldn't trade a trial. I wouldn't trade oh, man, anything right. I've been through to know who he is like I know him now. Oh, to know how he walks with us and talks with us and how mm -hmm. he is. This, if we are sold out to him, he is more sold out to us. Yes. Amen. He gave his life, and I'm so thankful. Oh, uh, yes. Him. Hallelujah.
the book of Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And go down to verse 43 with me. Last week we talked about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and the way that he uh, prayed and the way that uh, uh, the, I actually believe the enemy tried to kill him there. Oh, sure. Yeah. I believe he tried to kill him there because he did not want Jesus to go to the cross. Oh, he did. He knew he's no, how many knows the devil's no dummy? Okay. He knew that the cross was the nail in his coffin. That's he right. could keep him from, from going to the cross. He knows that he would be victorious. Amen. But as he's leaving the garden, we found we find something very interesting today. Mark chapter 14 and verse 43. Would you stand briefly with me this morning? And immediately, yes. while he yet spake, came Judas. Let me ask you this. Has anybody ever met anybody else named Judas? No. I don't think I've met another human named Judas. I don't think there was never probably, it might be some crazy parent named the kid Judas, but, but I don't think I've ever heard of nobody else named this Judas. Uh -huh. One of the twelve. Right. With a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Elders. And he that betrayed him had given them a token, uh -huh. saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss. Right. That same as he, take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. I want to talk to you today on. Uh, on uh, who's kissing Jesus now? <laughs> Who, who's kissing Jesus now? Right. Father in heaven, I ask your help today. I pray that you anoint me, and I believe you will. I need your anointing today, and God, I thank you for it. And I'll give you glory, and I'll give you honor. Lord, I pray today that we would hear from you the word of God, and I will give you the praise and the glory, and I'll thank you for it. Your word needs to be preached. Yes. Your word must go forth and it will not return void and empty. Tales will and stories will. But your word will not return void and empty. It will do that for which is sent. It will accomplish it. And God, I give you praise. And I give you glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. If I were to ask everybody here this morning or sharing with us and being with us on the internet today. If I were to ask anybody this morning to name the 12 disciples, probably, and I'm kind of convinced that we, 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 uh, we could name each of them, but I'm not really convinced that everybody here could name them. I'm not really convinced we could name every one of the disciples accurately However, though, there is one of them that most everybody remembers. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about this fella that everybody remembers his name. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm sure no one would miss identifying the name of Judas on that list. He is one of the most recognized names among the original 12 disciples. But his life kind of, to me, remains like a sad mystery or perhaps sure more, does. A, a more accurately, a sad tragedy. Sure does. That's right. This is a tragic story. Is. This is a real tragic story. Sure we understand how his life ended in suicide. He hangs himself. But the mystery of Judas revolves around uh, uh, missing the majesty of Christ while surrounded with opportunity. That's the truth. Yeah. Judas goes beyond refusing to accept the gift eternal, of eternal life. He betrays the Son of God. Sure does. With a cheap kiss. Yes, he does. Will y'all help me this morning? 
Preach. Go on. Preach. I, I, I've been out of pocket this week. I've been, been uh, can't do a whole lot in the hospital room and like I normally do. And uh, so help, help, help me preach this morning. So he goes beyond just refusing to accept that gift of eternal life. He betrays the Son of God with a cheap kiss. Yes, that's right. uh, <laughs> but a kiss should mean something. Yeah, sure. Can I tell you this morning, betrayal is something only a friend or loved one can do. Amen. To betray, one must first secure trust or loyalty in another. Right, that's right. And the enemy can attack you. <coughs> your competition may deceive you. A foe may plan for your destruction. But betrayal is a grievous act and committed by one who has pledged support yes. to you. That's true. That's true. Yes. Rejection may cause a wound, yes. but betrayal pours salt to make it sting. It sure does. Failure may knock you off your feet, but betrayal kicks you while you're down. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. There's something about betrayal. That's right. Criticism and insult hurts your pride, but betrayal breaks your heart. Sure the scripture refers to Judas as the betrayer. That's right. And his betrayal was a kiss of death. Jesus chose not to use the first person pronoun of betray me when asking if Judas would betray the Son of Man with a kiss thought about it, that the Lord's use of the Messianic, that title demonstrates the extent of the betrayal as more than a, a disagreement among friends. That's right, that's right. Judas opposed the work of Almighty God. Sure did. For selfish reasons. Jesus exposes this arrogant kiss of betrayal as a despicable act of Treason. That's right, it is. This particular portion of scripture is one that generates in my heart, I don't know about you, but it generates in my heart a tremendous amount of emotion. Sure. When yes. I read this. Yes. Uh, tremendous feelings, I suppose, of even almost being angry. Sure. Amen. Makes me mad. Yes. When I read this portion. Of scripture. Amen. But on the one hand, but on the other, and love on the other. Yes. Of a desire for the revenge on one hand, and yet complete trust in the plan of God on the other. Because this passage relates to us the act of betrayal and the arrest of Jesus. Amen. So to be I'm totally honest, when I read this account about Judas, the traitor, I became angry. The kiss of Judas is despicable and ugly and repulsive as one can ever imagine. Everything about it is distasteful. Sure is. Everything about it. This, demeaning and unfair, unjust to the Son of God. So there wells within me a certain amount of indignation, a certain amount of anger and a certain desire even for, for even vengeance you feel like. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other hand you ever notice that Christ is so perfectly calm? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the midst of unfolding of the redemptive plan of God that I find comfort in his own comfort and trust. You see, if there is a more ugly or repulsive word in the English language than the word traitor, it has to be the proper name Judas. That's right. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't betray an emperor. Right. Right. Nope. Judas didn't betray the president or even his nation. No, he went far beyond that and Amen. betrayed the Son of God. Yes, he did. Amen. God's only Son who came to earth so that all people, including Judas, yeah. including Judas, that's right, 
himself could be saved from their sins and experience the love of God in a personal way. That's right. That's right. At first glance, Judas didn't look at all like a traitor type. You ever notice that? Yeah. For, for example, the name his parents gave him indicates he probably came from a loving home. I say that because he was he 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 he, he wants a, a very proud name in a in Jewish history. So when Judas was Judas Iscariot was born, his parents picked what was in their day one of the best names any boy could have. Right. But as he grew, they no doubt raised him like other Jewish boys with a thorough understanding of Jewish history. I believe they guided him in the study of scripture. Another thing we can infer from the New Testament, Judas, at least at the beginning, apparently had uh, no obvious vices. He had no dishonorable past like, like the tax collector uh, turned disciple, Matthew Levi. Most of the other disciples were known for some weakness prior to their knowing Jesus. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, yeah that's right. Most of them had flaws that you can read about. That's right. Simon Peter was famous for impulsiveness. James and John for their temper. Yeah, that's right. But nothing uncomplimentary is mentioned about Judas's character. Isn't that something? In fact, he must have had an honest face and acted in such a way that made him at least appear to be trustworthy. Because at the beginning, the other disciples apparently admired him and respected him enough for the responsibility of being their treasurer. That's right. That's right. If you know somebody's like that, you don't, you don't give them the job. If you know they're a thief, if you know they're a betrayer, you won't give them the job. Right. He had these fellas fooled. He sure did. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Managing their meager funds. You don't just turn your money over to anybody. I say this because he seems to have even been a model citizen. Yeah. The Bible never says that he pushed himself on Jesus as did James and John. It says nothing about him ever making rash promises or big boats like Peter. He seemed to be quiet and businesslike and respectable. Yet he's a thief. He's a thief. That's right. Yes. Yet the perplexing truth is he chose to sell out the Messiah. He sure did. Yes, he did. To sell him out with a cheap kiss. There are many other things about Judas that are a complete mystery to us and make it hard to digest. I mean, why, why, did, why did he follow Jesus in the first place? Right, right. And how could a likable respectable man like this with such a good beginning in the span of three years in the company of Jesus and then do what he did. Sure, that's right. How could he spend three years yeah. in the company of Jesus? That's right. That's in the presence of Jesus. That's right. And still do what Judas did. Judas daily listened to teachings of Jesus. Yes, he did. Yes. Saw the miracles of Jesus. Yes. Yep. Judas went out and preached and taught in the name of Jesus. He sure did. That's right. Wow. <clears throat> Judas let Jesus wash his feet. Yes. Yep. Yes. That, that almost makes me mad there. Yeah. yeah. It does. Amen. Now just remember for just a moment that Jesus knew what Ju Judas was going to do. Yeah, he knew. That's right. Yeah, he knew. Before Ju Judas did it. Still did. 
I wish we could treat our enemies like that. Well, sure. yeah. I, I wish we had the ability to treat our enemies like that. That's right. We'd probably kick them. But he washes the feet. Sure did. After all of that, he still betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Sure did. A cheap kiss. A kiss should be a sign of affection, not rejection. Amen. Amen. So if we think about it, it's really also a fascinating thought to consider. Consider Jesus would allow someone who had sold and surrendered to the Lord, who had not sold and surrendered to the Lord, had mixed motives and treacherous plans, who had devils to be one of his disciples. Yeah. Amen. I can't figure that now. That's right. I just, I saw it's all part of the plan. I know it's part of God's plan. He, he this had to happen. Let me ask you a sobering question this morning. Could it be possible some who claim to be following Christ today are not following him at all? Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. Truth. Jesus kind of spoke about that concerning those people like that. Those who do good deeds in his name in Matthew 7. And 21, when he said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Yeah, that's right. Did we not prophesy in your name and in your name uh, cast out demons and in your name perform all these miracles? Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. What do you say? Wow. Yeah. So you mean, you mean, Pastor Ken, you really believe there's pastors standing behind the pulpit today that are betrayers? Yes, there is. Sure are. They're church leaders sitting in offices that they are betrayed. Are. Yes, they are. They are. Amen. Amen. They are. Amen. That amazes me. Now let me talk to you a minute. I want you to really get this. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I want us to consider the term predestination and ensure that we properly understand that term. Scripture does record it had been prophesied hundreds of years earlier that a close friend would betray the Messiah for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, it was a prophesy. Yeah. In fact, in Psalms 41 and 9, the Bible said, Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, yeah. which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against <coughs> me. That's right. yeah. yes. In Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 12, and it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was, a, was the word of the Lord. And I said to them, if you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for me my price, 30 pieces of silver. But God, but, now listen to me. But God didn't predestine or coerce Judas or somehow program him for this action. No, he didn't. You've got to understand that. Yeah. Jesus didn't call Judas to be a disciple so he would fill the prophesied role of the traitor. Right. If he did, then Jesus encouraged Judas to sin and the Lord would never do that. Yeah, don't do that. That's right. Wow. That's right. He would never do that. No. In fact, James 20, 13, the Bible said, Let no man, when he is tempted, say, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. That's what the Bible says. Amen. God does not tempt anyone. I read the author, an author named Lee, that he says, If Judas was predestined to betray Jesus, Meaning Judas had no choice. We would be too harsh in blaming this man for doing something over which he had no power or control. So if he was predestined to do this, don't blame Judas. Right. Right. You see, we can question a God 
who would predestine a man to such a fate and then condemn him for eternity simply to fulfill a plan. Mm -hmm. Judas had a free choice. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah. He doomed himself with his own choices. He did. A lot of people have a hard time believing it. I believe that. Yeah, he did. That's right. I believe Judas doomed himself with his choices. Yeah, that's right. God already knew from the foundation of time the choice that Judas would make, just as God knows each of us. He knows our ending from the beginning. Jeremiah 1 and 5, the Lord says, Man. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God already knew that dreadful night when Jesus left the disciples and made his way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Meanwhile, Judas met with the soldiers and arranged to lead them to the, uh, to, uh, to the rendezvous. And since it was right night and he didn't uh, want Jesus to slip away in confusion, he would give him a kiss of greeting. That there, there's, there's not going to be any confusion. The gospel writer tells the narrative, narrative very simple. The soldiers came. Yes, they did. Judas kissed Jesus. And they arrested him and took him away. But John adds a note to it in John 18 and 5. When the soldiers first came up, Jesus evidently spoke to them before they could say anything. And while he's speaking to the soldiers, John adds this title, this little detail. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. Yes, he was. Well, he was. Amen. There's a world of meaning in that phrase. Judas had gone over to the other side. He was not just with them physically. He's now with them spiritually. Yeah, he is. He is. His betrayal was this visible, public, and it's undeniable of what he did. Finally, the moment came for the kiss. And Judas came forward and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The Greek word means to kiss fervently and affectionately. It is the warm kiss that a man gives only to his dearest friends. And with that kiss, Judas betrayed the Son of God. Yes, he did. Yes. It's repulsive. Yes. To, you know, the betraying is bad. You know, but betraying, it, that's horrible. But to do it in this manner? Yes. It's the kiss above everything else that's earned Judas the approbation of Christians throughout the centuries. It is the foul dead. It's the foul deed that clings to his name like a dirty garment. Sure does. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about all the motives of Judas, really. But precisely why he did what he did will probably might be a mystery to us. But the record is perfectly clear about what he did. He thought up the plan to betray Jesus. He did. He approached the chief priest with the ideas. He made the deal. He took the money. He left the Last Supper to meet with the soldiers. Yep. And he led the soldiers to Jesus. He kissed Jesus on the cheek. In short, he thought it up. He planned the details. He carried out his plans to the letter. He meant to portray, portray Jesus. And that's exactly. What he did. See the tragedy of Judas betraying Jesus. Is not only this betrayal. But the sad thing is. That it's still happening today. It sure is. Amen. People still betray it with a kiss. Yeah, they do. We play Judas and give Jesus a betrayal kiss when we look to our own selfish and sinful desires rather than to God. We play Judas when we behave as our own gods and when we seek 
their own good outside of God and His perfect will for our lives. Amen. Amen. We play Judas when we sin. Our sin betrays a holy God and sells out our Savior. Our world has glorified Judas. Yes. Just as it glorifies sin and self. Amen. Sin makes Judas look like a hero. See, when we love our sin, we're in love with Judas. Yeah, that's true. We're in love with betrayal, and we do not love Jesus and his faithfulness. When we love something or someone more than Jesus, what, I, what, what, what whatever that other entity is becomes our God. Yeah, it does. And our idol. Amen. This is the gospel according to Judas. This is betrayal. And in doing this we make Judas the hero. Judas knew Jesus gave sight to the blind. Judas knew Jesus caused the lame to walk. Yeah. Judas knew Jesus healed ten leopards on their way down to, the, to show themselves to the priest. Judas helped the disciples distribute a miraculous meal to over 5,000 people that Jesus provided with a little boy's barred lunch with two fishes and some barley loaves. Judas saw Jesus walk on water. Yes. Jesus saw, Judas saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. Judas heard Jesus command the wind and the waves to submit to his authority by saying, peace, be still. Judas knew Jesus claimed to be Savior of the world. But Jesus was not his Savior. That's right. Judas even heard Jesus call him friend. That's right. Yes. Wow. After selling him for 30 pieces of silver. So I beg you this morning, don't make that same mistake. Amen. Be careful of delivering a cheap kiss. In John 17 and 12, Jesus called Judas the son of perdition. The Greek word for perdition literally means waste. Yes. Wow. An interesting fact that you may not know is that the name Judas comes from the word Judah. That's right. Which literally means praise. Yeah. His life, like every life, I believe, and I want to get this across, was meant to be a life lived in praise of God. Amen. But instead, Jesus called him a waste. Oh, my. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yes. Jesus calls him the son of perdition. Yeah, and in saying that, he's saying, you ain't nothing but a waste. That's true. My goodness, that's strong, isn't it? You ain't nothing but a waste. My goodness. Jesus Iscariot, who believed Jesus Christ, and betrayed him with a kiss, has become the most detested person, I believe, in almost of all of history. Yeah. The name Judas itself better such stigma that neither children nor pets carry that name. No, they don't. The New Testament writers, I thought this was really interesting, had such disdain for Judas that every time you read a list of the disciples, guess who's the last name on the list? Judas. Judas. <laughs> He's the last name on the list of the disciples. Yet one thing we learn because of Judas. Judas. It's kind of the key takeaway. Even when we betray God, God won't betray us. Amen. No, no. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. But well, listen to me. I, I read this. Judas uh, was not forgiven given for his betrayal of Jesus. You ask my opinion today, Judas is in hell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you want my, my honest opinion today, he's in hell. Yeah. No doubt. Right. That's right. And the reason is because he could not bring himself to repent of the sin that he had committed. Right. That's right. 
Brother Dorney, do you, do you honestly believe that after all Judas did betraying Jesus and everything, if before he died, before he killed himself, he said, Lord, would you forgive me of my sin? Do you think he'd have forgiven him? I do. I think he would. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I believe Jesus would have forgiven Judas. He would. Yeah. Of what he did. Sure would. You see, there, there's a difference between feeling sorry over something we've done yeah, and actually repenting of it. Amen. <laughs> Judas knew that he had done wrong. And when the full force of his terrible act hit him, the Bible says he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver coins to those who had paid him. He even takes the money back. And although he admitted he had sinned, it was too late. And the Bible said that he went out and killed himself. What a tragedy. Judas had been with Jesus most of his ministry. Hearing him teach and preach. But yet, when it's all said and done, he would not repent. He felt bad about it. Yeah. He felt sorry about it. But he never repented. Yeah. I read the most interesting little story that I found. Let, let me add this. You know, people come to church all their life and still not be committed to Jesus. That's the truth. But how many are glad God's grace and mercy can save even the worst of sinners? Amen. But only when they truly repent of their sins and trust Christ alone That's it. as their Savior. Let me close with this. The story is told that when Leonardo da Vinci was painting The Last Supper. I never read this until this week and I thought it was so neat. He had an intense and bitter argument with a fellow painter. Da Vinci was thinking of a way to get this guy back. And he came up with a devious plan. He decided to paint the face of his enemy onto the face of Judas Iscariot. So it would be captured for time immemorial. And that's exactly what he did. When people came to look at his work in progress, they immediately knew who Judas was. Da Vinci thought, that's a good Good idea. I showed him. And as he continued his work on the great painting of Christ and his disciples, he finally came to the face that he'd saved for the very end. The face of Jesus. But he could not bring himself to paint it. He just couldn't paint it. You know why? He was greatly troubled knowing that he had painted the face of his enemy as the face of Judas Iscariot. He realized that his hatred and his bitterness were keeping him from being able to face the face of Christ. So he went back to the image of Judas and painted some nebulous face instead. Then he was able to paint the face of Christ. That's a pretty big story. Isn't yeah. it? See, you got to repent. Somebody's got to be here to be today on, on the internet because surely as I look across this congregation, all of us have done that. But Judas. Judas Iscariot. I wish he'd have repented. Yeah. Yeah. I wish he'd have just said those words, forgive me, instead of just feeling mad. You know, that's why a lot of people come to 
do when they come to the altar. They, they, they come, but they don't repent. They come because they feel bad for what they've done. They, they just feel a little guilt, and they want that guilt on them. They don't ever intend. You see, it's, it's a, it, this, this is a true fact. You can kiss Jesus on Sunday and betray him on Monday. And people do that all the time. There's people kissing him today. Yeah, they are. They could be in the house of God and not. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So don't betray him with a kiss. My goodness. Would you stand with me this morning? But this is part of God's plan. Yeah. yeah. The betrayal. The betrayal was. No, he did not force Judas to sin. Yeah, that's right. Judas had a choice to make. Yeah, he did. He did. Judas had a choice. Aren't you glad we have a choice this morning? Yeah. Yeah. We have a choice to repent of our sins. Yeah. To let it cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Father in heaven, I love you today. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. Lord, don't let us kiss you one day and betray you the next. Don't let us give you a kiss of betrayal. Let us live holy and righteous for you all of our days. Serve you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and our strength. And God, I will give you praise and I'll give you glory. Lord, don't let me betray you. Don't let me sin and betray you. Don't let me crucify you over again and betray you. God, I praise you and I love you for it. In Jesus' holy, righteous name. Amen. I love you and I praise you. Would you come up with me this morning?